All right, folks, the weather is beginning to warm up as we approach spring, and you know what that means. More violence being bestowed upon drivers, whether you're driving for Uber or Lyft. What up, folks? Once again, it is indeed your boy Tim with another ride-sharing video. This one is not just some typical story about violence. It has a very unique feature in it, something we talked about all the time. Haven't seen this one. I don't know if I've seen many of these ever. Try to do it with a straight face. Nevertheless, here goes. Comes from a story out of Broome County, New York, titled, Man Steals Uber Driver's Car Leads Deputies on Chase. Doesn't sound out of the ordinary. After all, many of us get our shit taken from us all the time. Carjackings for rideshare drivers is extremely common all over the damn country. But I'll give you the details of it. And when you see the actual criminal, it'll tell you all you need to know. On March 10th, around 4.40 p.m., deputies responded to a report of vehicle theft at Helio Health on Glenwood Road in the town of Dickinson. The sheriff's office said Lane was in the parking lot of Helio Health and awaiting EMS arrival when he became impatient and called a taxi. Around that time, an Uber driver arrived at the drop arrived to drop a passenger off. The officer said Lane punched the Uber driver in the face and dragged him out of his red Honda Civic and fled the scene in it. Now, first of all, Helio Health, waiting for EMS to arrive. That is the assailant's position in this. He's at Helio Health, the health facility, waiting for an emergency medical vehicle to arrive. Got impatient called a taxi on his own and literally beat the hell out of the first Uber driver that arrived and took his damn car. Right off the bat, this should give you uh, memories of what we talked about, about getting away from taking medical patients. Uber Health, I believe Lyft, also gets involved in using us as medical transports and pseudo ambulances. What do we always say? Don't do that shit. If you're getting trips that involve you going to hospitals and medical facilities, I highly advise avoiding them, particularly if they're set up by a damn third party. Why? You're not going to get tipped. It's a guarantee that if the passenger is some type of mental patient or someone leaving rehab, and a third party is booking these trips, which is often some form of a uh, social uh, giveaway to these folks who need assistance. They're not going to tip you anything. So you're picking up mental patients. You're not going to get tipped. They could end up leaving, you know, whether it's soil, feces, not feces necessarily, but blood and things like that in your car. And they may be out of their damn mind. So avoid going to medical facilities to begin with. Here's a picture of this driver. What's so unusual about him? Shit, he's white. We talk about carjackings and drivers getting fucked up all the time. It is incredibly rare to see it being done by a white guy, particularly a carjacking. Now, in this case, he is a mental patient, did not even use a gun, punched the guy in the face and took his damn car. A little bit of pepper spray or something of that nature probably would have solved this event for the driver. But it does get worse for the driver and we want to talk about this from the standpoint of keep your defensive tools on you. As I stated, a little bit of pepper spray or mace in the face of this guy punching the driver would have ended that. But here's the continuation of the story. The office said uh, he fled east on Clinton Street, driving recklessly at a high rate of speed with patrols following him as he ran through multiple intersections in red lights on Front and Lewis Streets. Lane attempted to turn on to State Street, but lost control and struck a curb and drove onto the sidewalk. Lane exited the vehicle and attempted to flee on foot, ignoring deputies' commands. A brief struggle occurred between him and deputies, and he was eventually taken into custody. The sad part about this is what often happens to rideshare drivers anytime we face an unsavory ending where we lose our car to a carjacker. It's not uncommon for the car to be wrecked. 
In this case, lost control, hit a curb, you, you hear the wording of it. Most likely the driver has vehicle repairs ahead of him. Folks, you know Uber and Lyft do not cover repairs. And understand what a $2,500 deductible in regards to their insurance, even if their insurance covers it, you're out of pocket $2,500. Now, I don't know, depending on your own personal insurance, would your own insurance cover this over Uber or Lyft's? Maybe, maybe not, but even still, it's going to be the deductible that you set for it. Usually 500 to 1,000 is what most Americans have as a deductible on their own personal insurance. So this driver minimum is probably out of $500 for this incident, maybe as much as 2,500 if he uses the ride share insurance. Plus the time it takes to get his vehicle back up and running again, assuming the police don't hold it as evidence. This is what happens to drivers who are involved in this stuff. It's not straightforward. It's not black and white by any means. You're going to lose earning potential because your vehicle's out of service. Who knows how long? And then you got to pay the cost of your vehicle getting repaired. Also, the minute you report this shit to Uber or Lyft, what do they normally do? In addition to not doing shit for you, not helping you out financially one bit, they're going to deactivate you from the app until you show them your car is capable of taking trips again. And then you got to hope when you show them the pictures, they read readily reactivate you. I talked in the last video about them taking me down simply to do a background check. It took me three months to get back on the app. So if you're involved in something like this and Uber deactivates your vehicle for damage, once you get the damages repaired, who knows how long it may take before Uber or Lyft reviews what you sent them and reactivates you. This driver is going to lose money. There's no doubt about it. He's going to lose hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for this simple incident. Nevertheless, it comes to a conclusion with the uh, police chasing down the assailant, getting him into custody. He was thrown into jail where he continued being violent there. In fact, the story suggests that he was in the back of the ambulance when they caught up to him getting sick, got sick in the patrol car. They put him in an ambulance. He was still talking shit, refused any sort of medical care. So they took his ass to jail where he needed to be, was in jail causing a ruckus. They had to handcuff him to a bench. Because he was in jail kicking the doors and going all crazy and ape shit. This is what you could pick up if you deal with Uber Health or some of these rideshare companies using you as a medical transport. They were going to put him in EMS, which is where he belongs. But they will put folks like this in the back of your damn car. Avoid Uber Health trips at all costs. To conclude the story... The sheriff's office said it charged Jeffrey C. Lane, 35 years old of Rochester, New York area, with the following felony charges. Robbery in the second degree, grand larceny in the third degree, reckless endangerment in the first degree, and criminal possession of stolen property. Good riddance. That's a host of felonies. Hopefully the system keeps him off the streets for a while, but we are talking New York State, so good luck with that. Folks, just want to conclude the video by saying be cautious. Certainly keep your defensive tools on you. Pay attention to where you're at. And what do we always suggest that would have easily solved this shit? Keep your damn doors locked. It sounds like in this case... This individual punched the driver in the face, door readily unlocked, was able to drag the driver out of the car and do what he did. If your door was locked, that would end this. Keep your head on the swivel, you would have seen this damn guy approaching you. And certainly if you got your pepper spray or mace on you, you could have gave him a really good blessing to the face and the whole damn thing is over with. I don't know if you could legally put a bullet in the damn guy, particularly in New York. So I wouldn't advise utilizing your firearm, but you should damn sure carry one. Perhaps if you shanked him a couple times, maybe, but I don't know if you would have got away of got away with being able to pop this guy. But yeah, you, you're getting punched in the face. The guy's dragging you out of your vehicle. It's easy to suggest that I thought he was going to beat the hell out of me. I don't know the guy. I don't know why he's dragging me out of my vehicle. I don't know he's trying to take my vehicle. All I know is I've been hit 
and now he's forcibly taking me out of my vehicle. I think that's a good case to be made for thinking you were about to endure seriously serious bodily harm. But as I stated, this happened in New York, not Florida or Texas. So be cautious. It's your boy, Tim. Feel free to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will indeed see you in the next video.